Hi, everyone. Caitlin McGray is here, founder of Be Her Village. I'm here with Janelyn Pomeroy. I said that right, right? Yeah. Um, and she is a postpartum doula and a birth doula on Long Island in Garden City. And she's joining us today to talk about COVID-19, quarantine, and birth and parenting. So thank you for joining us, Janelyn. You're very welcome. And Thanks. we were just talking, actually, off the air about the lack of having a sense of time. <laughs> what is that like for you? Um, yeah, so I was just telling Caitlin that I actually just lost a week mm. um, that I had thought we had only been in quarantine for two weeks um, and that I was, I was recently at a birth. And so the mom was like, oh, I've been home for three weeks. And I was like, wait, I started quarantine like right when it was like became real. Um, and so I was like, how am I not, not already three weeks also, you know? And so I looked at my calendar yeah. and realized that I lost um, a week and I, what I've been doing is just taking it day by day. Um, and it, what, you know, when all this started, I started to get very overwhelmed. Um, and I went back to when I work with my birth clients, I always talk to them about staying in the moment, um, especially in labor, um, that you can only stay in the moment for your, that contraction. If you think about what's coming ahead, you'll get, you can very much get overwhelmed. Um, you have no idea how long it's going to last. Even if you're at a four, that doesn't mean that it's going to be another 18 hours. It could be another 45 minutes. You have no idea how long it's going to last. So you just stay in that moment. Um, and a couple days into quarantine, that kind of, that lesson re like hit me again. And I was like, that's exactly what I need to do right now. Um, because I have to just stay in the moment because yes, do you have to kind of think about long-term and meal planning and, you know, all those kind of things? Yes. But, um, to focus on that long-term, it, like it's so overwhelming and we have no idea where, how long it's going to be. So just like labor, like we just stay in the moment and make decisions for what we know in this moment. So um, I think that's part of why I lost track of time. <laughs> You're so in the moment, you have no idea yes, what has yeah. come or passed. <laughs> yes. you know, I find it interesting because, and I, you know, maybe it's just the profession that we're all in, but the people I speak to, both friends and women who have given birth and professionals in the birth field, there are so many parallels between labor and postpartum that are really interesting with quarantine. Mm -hmm. It's, it's like you said, it's the unknown. It is not knowing when it's going to end or how it's going to end. That's very similar to birth. And then the actual act of quarantine, and this is what I wanted to talk to you about today, is really similar to postpartum. Yes. In a lot of ways in the isolation, right? Mm -hmm. So like when women are home with their babies, they often feel isolated because the rest of the world seems to be going on and they're home and they're, they're losing track of time. They're right. all of their markers of their normal, like daytime is this and nighttime is this, they all get jumbled up. And I'm wondering how this is affecting women who are postpartum so they're dealing with you know the struggles and challenges of postpartum in addition to the uh isolation and stress of a pandemic so have you mm -hmm. been working with uh families in the postpartum right now whether it's virtually or in person what are you hearing from the women that you're working with yes i um i'm supporting several virtually um especially in um, support circles um and i'm finding that in some ways people are feeling um, like they're not alone because everyone else is in the same boat. Mm -hmm. So it's like, they're not missing out on anything. You know, I think sometimes when you're in that postpartum cocoon and staying in that survival and like not really going out yet and all those things, you know, and your friends are still getting together for, you know, someone's birthday or events or like all those kind of things you're missing. You feel like you're you can be feeling like you're missing out, um, on what's happening in the outside world. Um, so in some way there's a level of like, we're all in this together. We're all, you know, we're all hunkered down right now. We're um, all in postpartum. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we <laughs> all have newborns. In postpartum right now. <laughs> um, but then on the flip side, there's a lot of moms that are really struggling who, you know, whether they had um, postpartum doulas in place, so they had, you know, they had that physical support in place, um, or if they have family members that live close by that aren't able to come over and to, sit and hold the baby while they're going to take a shower or, you know, just to see other people. And especially I think there's a, 
a sense of loss and a grief um, for like grandparents that are close by and family members that are close by that aren't seeing these newborns like changing and, you know, developing and, you know, they're not hugging and cooing and like all those kind of things right now. Like, yes, there is this virtual aspect of life right now, but there's a difference. And there's, so I think there's definitely a loss in a mourning um, for not being able to share those experiences if you're gifted enough to have the opportunity to have family close by. I love that you touched on that. I think that there is this collective kind of like anxiety and grief that we're all going through, right? There's the anxiety about what's to come, but I think there's also this, this discomfort that's sometimes hard to put a finger on. And I read an article, it's like, what you're feeling is grief. It's grief yes. for what, what was our old life that feels mm -hmm. really, really, really far away. Mm -hmm. um, and it's also grief for what we planned, right? So many people planned beautiful births with doulas and and full support teams and postpartum doulas and i mean huntington hospital shut down their postpartum unit yes. northwell say i mean they're part of the northwell system but mm -hmm. these hospitals are converting every single space they have for coronavirus patients mm -hmm. and understandably so i know the system is stretched to the max but um huntington hospital for example is and the Northwell system is mm -hmm. transferring women. I'm sure you know about this off yes. site, yes. and their partners are not allowed to yeah. be there. It's, mm -hmm. It absolutely is inconceivable to me how somebody yeah. could make that. The yeah. you know, I mean, I think we all work be her village and all the postpartum doulas and everybody is working towards getting women more support because we mm -hmm. all think that people need more support, and I think it's absolutely jaw-dropping to see hospital systems at the system level disregarding women's need for a support team for advocates for for anything I mean I, I'm thinking about my own first birth I had a c-section and I actually on the second night I was in a hospital that didn't allow partners to stay over so on the second night I was really? on my own getting in and out of the bed it was so painful it was wow. so difficult and you know the second night is the night the baby does not sleep they are up right. the entire mm -hmm. night and I was completely on my own and, and that was awful. And it, it triggered me into this work to try and prevent that for everyone. And I feel like we're taking such huge steps backwards with mm -hmm. these hospital systems, making these blanket policies where part, I mean, partners do not have your husband or wife or boyfriend or girlfriend, whoever, or even if you don't have a, you know, a, a domestic partner, a, a support person mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. you is just awful. Um, so absolutely, there's grief involved. What, what is it looking like at home? What is postpartum doula support in a virtual way? Obviously, virtual is not ideal, right? And I think right. one good thing about all of this is that we're recognizing the importance of in-person warmth and human connection. And I think mm -hmm. on the other side of this, whatever that looks like, we will value that more than we ever have. Um, but what is it looking like for you now while you're supporting people virtually? Yeah. So I, you know, obviously there is huge value in that physical connection and that physical support that you can give. And that, that is something that's lacking right now. So, you know, you're not folding laundry, you're not doing the dishes, you're not holding baby. So mom can go take a shower or a nap. So there, you know, that element is obviously gone. Um, but everything else that a postpartum doula does is still super valuable. So you're still that level of that um, listening ear, you know, and so all that new momness that comes up and you're not sure, you know, if you're doing this right or if that's going right, or, you know, am I supposed to feel this way? And this breast has a little bump here, you know, like all those kind of things. Um, you're still that listening ear to communicate with mom and to support her in this unknown journey. Um, to kind of, um, I had a, a, a client one time to say that um, I was her training wheels um, during this new, you know, this new oh, phase of parenthood. That. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so you can still, like, there's still that level of support. Um, obviously helping um, if moms are nursing, um, chest feeding, um, helping with that. Um, I've done lots of consults actually recently um, on um, nursing and, um, you know, how the latch is going and, you know, and engorgement and all those kind of things. Um, partners are there holding the cell phone on FaceTime and you're like, no, I need you. So <laughs> <laughs> I need a better it's handle. <laughs> it's definitely a group team effort. Um, but that's, you know, that's still something that's very easy to do. Mm. Um, and so all of the, and the educational aspect is also so there. Um, and just, so, you know, still that, that level of like 
having someone to be a guide through this unknown time, um, that level of that, that reassurance level to say, is this okay? Is this right? Like, am I supposed to, is this what's how it's supposed to feel? That's totally still there. Um, That's so, wonderful. Yeah. It's, it's really difficult, I think, for new moms that don't have that postpartum doula support um, to go down like the Google wormhole. Of, yes. Is this normal? Is this okay? How do I do this? And when you Google things like that, or you ask things like that in parent groups on Facebook, mm -hmm. and oh my goodness. You, get, you get a whole bunch of experts yes. that have completely opposite opinions who are not taking into account the nuances of your situation. Right. So I could see how a postpartum doula, while not being in person is not ideal, how it can still be so valuable to have somebody to walk you through and support right. you and empower you. I love right. that training wheels. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What are you finding um, in terms of partners? Is there more stress on partners in terms of cooking and cleaning and, and trying to uh, do all of those roles that postpartum doulas would typically do hands on? How are you guys supporting partners? Yeah, I definitely think that partners are having um, to do a lot more right now. Um, so, you know, um, I had one couple that I was speaking to yesterday that the parents are out of town, but they came in super early. Um, and so they quarantined and so they've been at the house. Um, and so that's not the partner, but it's the grandparents that are there, but they're getting ready to leave. And um, dad is getting ready to go back to work because um, he's mm -hmm. essential worker. And so we talked about like um, grandma doing a whole bunch of meals and putting them in the freezer um, mm -hmm. so that they could be brought out, you know, just very quickly and easily that way. Um, but dads are definitely, um, or partners are very much um, kind of stretched more thin and having to, um, to fill in more gaps um, right now. And a lot of them are also been balancing working, you know, so they're adjusting to parenthood, adjusting to trying to help um, their significant other, you know, in this transition. And then if they're working from home, like still balancing that. Um, mm -hmm. So it's definitely, yeah, I, think, I think it's hard because everyone has this vision of like quarantine, it's everyone sitting around, but I don't mm -hmm. know, there's not a lot of sitting around. No. <laughs> I mean, my, husband, my husband is working like nonstop. I think mm -hmm. he keeps saying, he's like, I'm working harder now than I did when I was right. at work yes. because he's, he's a teacher. So he's mm -hmm. like learning how to use all these programs and implementing everything in a virtual way. And now we have three kids home with us and it's, there's so many more meals to cook and you, you know, we're not ordering out and we're not right. packing them up and setting them on the bus. It's, I think it's, it's a really interesting dynamic and I, mm -hmm. I can't imagine adding a, a new baby to this time. Right. It's really difficult. Wow. So do you have any tips that you can leave us with for new parents as they're navigating this time, maybe pregnant people who are about to give birth and I'm sure have lots of concerns about their birthing place and what their postpartum would look like. Do you have tips besides maybe packing freezer meals, although that is a really good tip, <laughs> yes. make meals for your freezer. What else as a postpartum doula would you recommend? Um, I would say just to, you know, going back from where we very first started is just to stay in that moment, to stay in the moment that you're in, because um, it's so easy to get overwhelmed on what this is going to look like long term. So staying in that moment. Um, to to reach out to community. I think that we can feel like we are all alone 100% right now because we are in our houses and we, you know, we're not seeing people and we're just in this hunkered down, like I'm all alone. Um, when you really, you aren't like, yes, physically we're alone, but thankfully we have so many, um, so many ways to communicate virtually. It's not just even a phone call anymore, like how we are right now over Zoom. And, um, you know, there's so many ways that you can connect with people. Um, and so to reach out to, you know, whether it's the supports that you already had in place, it's family members, or to reach out to find new supports, to find a postpartum doula, um, to join a virtual support group, you know, something like that, um, to not be afraid to reach out, um, to, be, to, bring in, to bring in that those levels of support that you need. Yeah. That's a great tip because I think, I think that community is really important mm -hmm. in person all yes. the time. And I don't know that that's even a known fact for new moms that they, mm -hmm. you know, everyone plans their baby shower and they make the nursery look nice and they, you know, plan their maternity leave and the finances. But I'm not, I know a lot of women who, especially women who work full time and then they get into this like maternity leave zone where for three or four months, they're just 
home mm -hmm. and alone and, mm -hmm. and they don't have a network of people who are home also. And to build that up, to just go back to work, it doesn't always seem like, <laughs> like it's a worth thing it. to mm -hmm. do, right? Like what is the point of right. that? But there really is so much value in that. And I think even more than ever, I love that that was, yes. was the yeah. tip is to yeah. I always say that, um, you know, it's really important to make mom friends. And so, and but three la layers of mom friends, ones that are a little bit far ahead of you that you can watch mm -hmm. um, and see what they're doing. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to do exactly what they're going to do, but so you can watch and you can collect and say, oh, I like how they handled this situation. I like this. Oh, they're going through this at this stage. And so you can store that in the back of your mind for when you're going along your journey. Ones that are right beside you. So you can be like, oh my goodness, I was up with my baby all last night. Oh my goodness, I was too. Hey, let's text tomorrow night when we're both up or Facebook, you know, like something yeah. like that. So you're in that like me too. Yes, we are both right here. We understand. We don't, we can even just look at each other and we know what we're going through. And then to have people that are a little bit behind you that you can be that person that you're helping pull along and to say, oh, I remember that. Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. I understand that. Like I've been there before. Um, and I think especially having those people that are a little bit behind you that you can, it helps to, helps you to grow in your own strength as in confidence as a mom. When you, you know, you see someone that, you know, maybe you have a six month old and you have a friend that has a newborn and you see them struggling with something or not knowing how to handle something. And you're like, oh, I remember. And this is what I did. And you're like, oh. I can do this. I am doing this, you know, yeah. where it really helps you realize you can... how far you've come. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it feels like you're struggling the whole way until you right. realize, oh, mm -hmm. I know how to help you. I love yeah. that idea, Janelyn. That's wonderful. It actually reminds me of a funny story. Um, I used to go to library classes all the time. That was when I was pregnant um, with my second. I started, that's how I made all my mom friends. I just went to the library and made women talk mm -hmm. to me. And, um, I had two boys before I had a little girl. And I remember there was this one mom who would kept telling me that her daughter, who was around my son's age, like one or two, would throw these huge tantrums every day about the clothes she would wear. And I had boys. So I was total judgmental mom, like only in my head, but definitely right, judging right, in right. my head. Mm -hmm, and I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, who, who lets their kid tantrum about clothes? That's ridiculous. Because my, <laughs> my boys just put on whatever I wanted. And then I got a girl and mm -hmm. she was like, she was so young. The first time she had a tantrum about clothes, she was probably like 15 or 16 months old. Oh, and I okay. tried to put on a, some sort of item of clothing that had a zipper. And that was not, she still doesn't like zippers, but it was <laughs> the tantrum of all tantrums. And I just remember being like, oh, okay, this is what that mom was talking uh -huh. about. And it has nothing to do with the parenting and has everything to do with your individual kid and and I loved that right. because it was like oh okay I remembered her story and I remembered what she had been through mm -hmm. and it made it all really normal for me and yes. it wasn't like yeah. a place where I went and judged myself because I had already judged her so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which is probably for a whole other conversation yeah. about mom judgment which there is yeah. so much of yes awesome yes. Yes. well thank yes. you so much Janelyn for joining us and thank you for your time and all of the work that you're doing to support your families